to welcome the Most Reverend Michael Bullet, our Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of San Antonio, who will lead us in prayer and share a brief reflection. Welcome, Bishop Mike. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, I appreciate uh, being with you today. Um, I am going to lead our prayer by um, using some prayers or some intentions that I found in Christianity today, this month. It's a, it's a very comprehensive list of things about which we pray in these times. Uh, so you can find a copy of it in, in Christianity today. Um, so let us ask our Lord to be with us for we praying not just for ourselves uh, in this difficult time, but also praying for so many other folks uh, who we seek to serve and many of whom we do not even know. Lord God, we pray for the sick and infected. God, heal and help sustain our bodies and spirits, contain the spread of this infection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our vulnerable population, God, protect our elderly and those suffering from chronic disease. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear prayer. our prayer. For the young and the strong, God, give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading this disease. Inspire them to help instead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local, state, and federal governments, God, help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources for combating this pandemic. Help them to provide more tests. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand the disease and communicate its gravity, God, give them knowledge, wisdom, and a persuasive voice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. Hear our For the media, committed to providing up-to-date information, God, help them to communicate with appropriate seriousness without causing panic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For consumers of media, looking to be well-informed, God, help us find the most helpful local information to equip us to be good neighbors. Keep us from anxiety and panic and enable us to implement the recommended strategies even as a at a cost to ourselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, our prayer. hear our prayer. For those with mental health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless, God, provide them with necessary support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, Lord our prayer. hear our prayer. For the homeless, unable to practice the protocols of social distancing in the shelter system, protect them from disease and provide isolation shelters in every city so that they might uh, continue living in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those traveling abroad, unable to return, that God may help them return safely and quickly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. For Christian missionaries throughout the world, especially in areas with high rates of infection, God, provide them with words of hope and equip them to love and serve those around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, prayer. hear our prayer. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God, keep them from panic and inspire your church to generously support them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, our prayer. hear our prayer. For families with young children at home for the foreseeable future, God help mothers and fathers to partner together creatively for the care and flourishing of their children. For single mothers and fathers, 
grow their networks of support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents who cannot stay home from work and must find care for their children, God present them with creative solutions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Lord, prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of regular therapies and treatments that must now be postponed, God help them to stay patient and positive. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our Lord. prayer. Hear our prayer. For pastors and church leaders faced with the challenges of social distancing, God help them to creatively imagine how to pastor their congregations and their love and love of their cities well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For college and university students whose courses of study are changing, whose placements are canceled, whose graduation is uncertain. God, show them that while life is uncertain, their trust is in you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For our frontline health care workers, we thank you for their vocational call to, to serve us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God, bless and protect each one in this meeting and all of those in our archdiocese who are seeking to serve you in these different times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. And we make these our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Um, I wish uh, no, no one of us knows exactly what and how to do all the things that we are being asked to do in these particular times, but I do know that there are very many of us seeking to do it well and in filled with faith. Um, the, uh, one of the major difficulties of this particular time is that uh, the, we, have, we can't have this wonderful thing that Pope Francis talks about all the time, uh, in Espanol, cercanía, closeness, closeness to our people. And no matter how, how delighted the technology freaks are these days uh, with their new revelations and the like, there is nothing like a nice hug or a nice hand, warm handshake or, or to be able to the touch of the sacraments uh, in people's lives. And so uh, there, we were growing in harmony between that physical con closeness and the technology uh, available to us at one time. And in partnership, they're pretty good, but uh, when they're separated completely from each other, as they often are at this particular moment, uh, they are less than satisfying. So I recognize the challenges that uh, you are undertaking and uh, we join you in them. Certainly, um, the offices of the Pastoral Center are uh, um, steaming and streaming, uh, trying to figure out what God is calling us to do in each situation with which we are presented. And even while we deal with the, uh, the necessary uh, issues involved just with the pandemic, we also have to continue to deal with the reality of proclaiming the good news, uh, dealing with life and death, and, um, and all of the issues that are involved in, in, uh, with administration, which are even more heightened in this time. Uh, pray for us as we are praying for you. Use well the leadership that uh, is leading this meeting and be leaders yourself uh, in your locales and, um, and celebrate well this great Paschal feast in front of us, this period of Easter, which uh, having been through a very different kind of Lent, we will now go through a different kind of Easter, but it is the same story in both. And so we must carry them in our hearts in all the ways that we serve. Thank you very much for your attention to God's people. Thank you so much, Bishop Mike. We are truly united as one people of God amid the struggles that we are all facing. So we want to dedicate the next couple of minutes to hear how are you guys doing, to check on how are you guys holding on. We truly want to hear from you. So if you could um, dedicate about one to two minutes to allow our many voices to be heard 
on how are you guys doing? And as I mentioned earlier, um, if you want to share, please raise your virtual hand by clicking on the icon label participants right in the center of your screen, and I will call your name so you can share. So how I'm are you guys doing? Another meeting. I'm going to another meeting. I'll see you all later. God bless. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the floor is open. How are you guys doing? We have Sister Marta. Welcome. Please, if you can unmute yourself. <clears throat> Let us be grateful. We are called to a global retreat. And I'm grateful for my community of Incarnate Word sisters uh, trying to enter into the Paschal mystery. Uh, I am well, and I invite you to sign on to the Pope's plea, the Secretary General of the UN's plea. This is the time for war to cease in the world. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much and welcome. Now we have Michelle. Um, if you can please unmute yourself. Hello, this is Michelle Wickley and I'm with St. Paul's Catholic Church and um, we're doing relatively well. Um, we were blessed to, of course, live stream our uh, our tritium and we had uh, some of our catechumens that were able to go ahead and receive their sacraments and um, uh, Father Charles has been also doing live streaming daily mass he's doing he's done a holy hour that he's live streamed um, they're hoping to get a couple of other things so that we're staying in constant communion communication with people through like the Facebook through YouTube so that's helped a lot and then even with our youth which is what I'm in charge of um, our our uh, young adults have been uh, doing a Facebook Bible study that people can come in and be a part of. Um, with our high school ones, we've been doing the secure um, Zoom meetings that they really love that because just to be able to see each other and talk to each other is so important for them. And then our middle schoolers, uh, we've been just making sure that every week we're sending out something to them and their parents, um, activities that they can do, different prayers that we found. So we're doing everything we can to keep in commun communication with everybody. They've also tried going through some of our, uh, going through and try to call some of our parishioners and try to stay on top of that and just finding out if there's people in need. And so it's been going pretty good considering everything the way that it is. So we just feel really blessed at St. Paul's. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Feel free to also use a chat part to share your your thoughts we have Sylvia welcome Sylvia hello can you hear me yes welcome okay um, what we are doing at St. Dominic's is always trying to stay together in communication with our parents we are with our youth and your young adults for the high school faith formation classes we created a Google classroom so we give them assignments for the week and at the same time, then that gives them an opportunity to, to leave comments. So we are aware who are the students that are, are connected to that. And we send reminders to all the parents about this and information as well. Another thing that helps us is that any activity that is going on at the church, let's say the mass, the daily mass, um, the rosaries, um, through the remind application, we remind all the parents and and we have been able to see that the parents are connecting to that as well, are participating. Uh, right now, one of the things that we're doing with some of our youth group is we're inviting them to, we're in the process of asking them to uh, record a ro a one decade of the rosary. And hopefully by tomorrow, we will be able to learn about that where we see all the families and as well as we're for, from Father Mike to the family. So we're trying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Sylvia, and thank you for those who have shared. I would like now to welcome Mrs. Lisette Farias. She's our Secretariat Director for Christian Community, Laity, Marriage, Family, Life, and Youth. Lisette? I'm sorry. There I am. There you are. <laughs> so welcome, uh, welcome again, uh, everyone. I'm happy to see so many familiar faces uh, here. 
So um, I uh, just wanted to share a quick question with uh, everyone. Uh, this, is, this is a listening part. So again, as Peter mentioned, we want to hear from you. So we want, I wanted to ask, what does ministry look like for you during this Easter season? How, how now that we're, you know, we've lived through the tritium and now we're in the, leaving the Easter season, how, how, are, how does ministry look like for you now in this Easter season? So it's open to anyone that wants to share. We have Debbie. Welcome, Debbie. Welcome. Um, I'm from Sacred Heart, and for me, what I have been able to do is, uh, you've been able to continue to keep up with my class. I teach the RCIA Adapted for uh, Students. I have uh, junior high and high school, and uh, I've been sending them Bible verses. Uh, they've been uh, attending masses virtually. They have also been, uh, they, uh, I've been sending them from, I sent them information on the Tritium. Um, fortunately, right now, we don't have anything set up um, uh, virtually, but I am going to get together with the director uh, of education, uh, religious education, and with Father Frederick to see how, I mean, I like the idea that some of you are using Google, and I would be very interested in helping them set that up so that we can get the sacraments taken care of, because and I did have one uh, young man, he's already 18 years old, that was supposed to have been baptized at the um, Easter vigil, but unfortunately that didn't occur. So um, I need to make sure that he's going to be able to get his sacraments done because he graduates May 31st and on June 1st, he enters the Navy. So I don't want to lose him. You know, he's a special soul and I do want to make sure that he you know, gets his sacraments in and, and that we, I can continue uh, with him along his journey as he enters the Navy. Thank you. Thank you, Davy. And we have, he said we have from Araceli down in Del Rio. She said that after the hailstorm, they celebrate a beautiful vigil Easter Mass. And um, the community has seen the support of parishioners and school families. The online learning also and the Zoom um, a celebration of mass. Linda also said about the streaming mass has been a way of keeping parents and the community together. It's great to hear it, to see the spirit of the, of the Easter season alive and well with all these comments. Thank you, Peter. Anyone else? We also have somebody saying that Facebook has also helped the ministry to connect virtually, not just with mass, but also with the people at the parish. I think Angela has her hand raised. Angela Quintanilla. Welcome, Hi. Angela. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, glad to see all these faces and that um, we're sharing this time together. Uh, I'm our Lady of Guadalupe in Halotas, and I work with the middle school youth, and uh, we have communi communication platforms such as Remind, in which that we can send links to the parents to help them during the Easter season. We also have a Facebook page in which we are really promoting uh, parents and the teens to uh, pray together, uh, to do different activities together. Um, we also <laughs> started our Zoom for Edge, and it's been wild, but it's been amazing, really a blessing, and by God's grace, because I'm not very computer literate. All this is like new to me, and uh, we had uh, about 97 kids last night on the Zoom, and uh, we break them up into small groups. Um, one of the things I really want to focus on, well, this past week, what we focused on was the, the readings of John um, 20, verse 1 through 9. And we really dove into that. And then this week, we're going to be dive, diving into Divine Mercy. So not just praying together, but providing videos for them to watch, uh, opportunities to learn more about um, Palestina and about uh, St. John Paul and their devotion to Divine Mercy. Um, also, I'd like the kids to get involved with reaching out to the elderly uh, in our community. I am going to ask them to write letters, and uh, we're going to mail them out to our uh, homebound uh, families. Uh, I also think it's great that um, 
with this many kids, we have a fantastic team and they small, the small group leaders called and reached out to those families. And just the phone call alone has been great. So maybe trying to find a way to continue reaching out to our communities, like in a phone tree or something, mm -hmm. uh, because just the leaders calling and saying, hello, how are you doing? You know, I'm your small group leader from Our Lady of Guadalupe. How can we pray for you? Has been uh, uh, just uh, very fruitful in that. So um, interested in, in hearing how other people are reaching out to their communities and ideas of, of how to better serve. Uh, our parish at Our Lady of Guadalupe. Of course, we're streaming masses, and uh, that attendance has gone up as well. Uh, we also did a uh, praise and worship live stream, uh, and that was a lot of fun as well. So, thank you. Um, my only concern is reaching out to those that don't have um, the ability with the internet right. and computers and stuff. Thank you. Right. No, no, thank you, Angela. Thank you. And thank you, Lisette, for that uh, amazing question. Now, now I would like to welcome Ms. Gigi Sipian. She's our Secretary Director for Evangelization, Catechesis, and Faith Formation. Gigi, you also have a question for us. We can hear you, Gigi, if you can unmute yourself. I have been unmuted. Thank you. All right. Thank um, you. Welcome. Thank you very much. As uh, was sent out in the invitation. The question is how can we prepare ourselves and those we serve for the fe Feast of Pentecost? Well, that's a big question uh, for the short time that we have, but I'm, I hope to make some points that will give us some opportunity for reflection during this, uh, this time we have together. Well, first of all, Hallelujah, he is risen. He is truly risen, right? Happy Easter Tuesday. Uh, this week, especially, we are an Easter people, as St. Augustine first said in the fifth century. Only the solemnities of Christmas and Easter are celebrated with an octave. And each of these eight days, after Easter is itself a solemnity. So today is a solemnity. And during this Easter octave, the gospels in the liturgy all concern the events of the day of the resurrection. Each day is an Easter day. Then as we know, the season of Easter continues for 50 days until the next solemnity, which is the fulfillment of what Jesus promised the sending of his spirit of justice and truth at Pentecost. But before we get ahead of ourselves, we are going to take a bit of a closer look at the gospel resurrection narratives during this octave and see what they have to tell us about how we should be living now in preparation for the Pentecost to come. So whether we catechize children or youth or work with their parents, whether we minister to adults or are preparing mystagogy for the neophytes after the reception of the Easter sacraments, the narratives of the disciples after the resurrection have much to tell us. First of all, First of all, the risen Christ first appears directly to two groups of people only. First, to some faithful women, Mary Magdalene, and some others in Mark and in Luke, as well as to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus in the Gospel of Mark. The 11 apostles heard about the resurrection, either from the women or from these witnesses. And they also witnessed, Peter and John witnessed the empty tomb described in Luke's and John's gospel. Now, poor Thomas, I feel for, sorry for Thomas every year. He's the one who gets the bad rap for being the doubter. But on the very day of the resurrection, he was not the only one. 
Luke and Matthew describe how the 11 doubted the testimony of the eyewitnesses of the women and of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. But Mark tells it the most starkly. I'm just going to read you a couple of lines from Mark, which are not usually in the cycle of readings that we hear at Mass. When he had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. She went out and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, Jesus appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. That's kind of startling. Now we know that Jesus appeared to the 11 that evening and said, peace be with you. And that's when, unfortunately, Thomas was not there and needed to see for himself just as the 11 did. So what are the gospels telling us about the authenticity of the resurrection and the importance of credible witness and how these are to prepare us to accept the coming of the Holy Spirit. So what are the gospels telling us today about one, the authenticity of the resurrection, two, the importance of reliable witness, including the witness of scripture and the witness of the church, and three, how these authentic witness, authenticity, I should say, and witness prepare us to embrace the coming of the Holy Spirit. So I would love to hear your insights. Thank you so much, Amy. thank you. We have this family, welcome. Can you unmute um, yourself, please? Can you hear me now? Now, welcome. Yes, I, thank you so much. My name is Stan. I'm with St. Benedict Church. And I believe that um, um, the credible witness of, through the resurrection uh, began with Christ himself, with his revelation that he is there among them. He is with them again. And I think we need to realize that in ourselves also, faithfully, believingly. And in, in order to reach uh, the Pentecost, which is the birthday of the church, um, I think we should realize also that um, the church is going to be born in us again. And again, every year we celebrate the Pentecost. And it's always a time to, um, of renewal, but um, the path we journey along the, along the road to Emmaus, for example, is the road to the Eucharistic table with our Lord, at which he reveals us again in the Eucharist. But with the Pentecost, it is the birthday of the church, and um, in preparing for our own birth, as it were, um, we should be faithfully believing that um, the Lord is risen and that we are awaiting his paraclete as he did promise. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. The credible witness from the even room to the kitchen and to the HEB. How can we, through this uh, series of weeks, be that um, face of Christ? Thank you, Gigi. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Aaron Castillo. He's the Secretary of Director for Mission life, justice, peace, outreach, and young adults. Aaron, welcome. Thank you very much, Peter, and hello to everybody. It's wonderful to see you again. Um, following on the two questions that have been posted so far by my colleagues, I have one more question that we can talk a little bit about here. Um, as days go by, we see more and more people in uh, the Archdiocese of San Antonio, throughout the Archdiocese, 
uh, and throughout the country and the world that are being affected by the economic consequences of the pandemic. So in a few minutes, we'll be uh, listening to the different projects and programs that Catholic Charities has in place to help those who are in need in our communities. But in the meantime, uh, I would love to hear from, from you the kind of things that parishes are doing uh, or, or people in your parishes are doing to help those who are facing particularly difficult circumstances right now due to poverty, unemployment, sickness, imprisonment, etc. So uh, Juan Carlos just posted the, the question that, that we're going to discuss now. How can we help uh, people who are facing great material needs during this Eastern season? As a brief reminder, you can always raise your virtual hand or post your comments in the chat section. Well, Joan, welcome. I had seen a, a resource earlier today and it's available on our, on our website, um, or if it's not there, now it will be, but it really caught my attention because it was a Bible study format um, for ministering to unemployed parishioners. It really, it struck me as a resource. Um, it, it struck me as a concept uh, that's affecting um, so many these days and how in this moment of time um, uh, we've been invited to walk with them, you know, in a unique way. And especially because of what we're, we're going through in the, in the drastic numbers. So that's, that's an interesting um, tool that I thought could could definitely address, um, or at least be a, an, a way of accompanying those that are uh, in that circumstance these days. Yes, Joan, you, Joan, it is in fact available on the DPM website on our resource page under formation and educational resources. It's there now. Thank you, thank you, Joan and Gigi. Um, Sister Anna said um, in the chat that the vocation office with Zoom will set, set up a discernment group also to reach out to those um, the men and women discerning their call. Thank you, Sister. Vilma also says that reaching out, especially to those, as we heard earlier, that are unable to use the internet through the phone calls and, and um, several ministries, so we can stay in touch with them as much as we can. Lisette also says uh, through the chat at home that um, there are people collecting canned foods for the inner city nonprofits. Um, Philip mentions that the um, reaching out to the incarcerated via a letter, maybe a writing campaign. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Lisette of Elma. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for um, sharing your thoughts. Um, at this time, I would like to um, well welcome our one of our um, invitees for a, a presentation. It's Mr. Antonio Fernandez. He is the president and CEO of our Catholic Charities San Antonio. Antonio will share with us what Catholic Charities are doing to accompany our local church. So welcome, Antonio. Bienvenido. And please, if you can make sure to unmute yourself. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for inviting me to speak today uh, to all of you. And, uh, and I hope you are having a great week now um, after our Easter Sunday and uh, during these 40 days of Easter now. You know, a Catholic charity is becoming um, a large entity in the diocese, but also in, in the city and the county. And now for several years, we are working to try to uh, uh, deal with crisis or emergencies that happen around us. Um, hopefully you remember two years ago, we had um, something called Harvey. Um, we were blessed in San Antonio that Harvey did not actually touch us, but, but we did help a lot of people, uh, the parishes and the diocese, especially in Houston and 19 other dioceses in the state of Texas. Um, we did that with many parishes who supported the efforts at, at to the end, sending over 100 vehicles to different dioceses with food, uh, clothing, cleaning supplies, and so on. Last year, the emergency was the reunification of the children with the parents. Again, we were once again the Diocese of San Antonio, the leading entity 
in Texas with McAllen at the time, uh, Catholic Charities of Rio Grande. Um, and it was amazing to see the response of Catholic Charities, but more amazingly, the parishes and the people who support us, the volunteers. So on a regular basis, Catholic Charities has over 40 programs. We have four shelters, San Pedro, Cido Home, uh, Guadalupe Home, and Casa Nacho. Um, and then programs dealing with children, seniors, families, finances, anything that you may think. And we try our, our best to actually provide for everybody. So now with this pandemic, things have increased drastically in many ways. And, and I would like to talk to you about four or five different programs, if you don't mind. Uh, our food program, we started, I, I, I heard that there's someone here from Our Lady of Guadalupe. So it was great to uh, partner with Our Lady of Guadalupe in Gelotes and with many other parishes to do 40 cars for Lent. Uh, so we were planning to collect over 100,000 pounds of food, but because of all this pandemic, this, the efforts were stopped and we couldn't do that anymore. However, the need actually has multiplied. Uh, you may have seen the food bank doing great things and they, they are doing a great job. Uh, we are not talking um, as much and we are not talking to the public about what we do, but be confident that Catholic Church and the diocese is supporting and feeding people in need. Uh, we counted over 6,000 people in the last two weeks since April 1st. So 6,000 people is a lot more than we usually would have done, by the way. Uh, our legal services are still, you know, working hard and they are doing that now electronically through the websites. So counseling, tele telehealth uh, and legal services are becoming very popular and they are keeping doing that. And uh, trust me and believe me, this is going to be a huge need for the diocese in the months to come. Uh, we are already getting calls from people who cannot pay rent and then landlords are going to try to evict them. And that may not happen now, but that's going to happen later. Um, so all of these people who have legal issues, just feel free to recommend them to come to Catholic Charities and, and to get legal, and legal advice for free or pro bono. Counseling is a big issue these days. Uh, you may know that domestic violence is actually something that happens often in, in these diocese. Um, so we want to be sure that moms and, and perpetrators or men and perpetrators whoever needs help but that they have a place where they can actually talk about their faith about their lives in a catholic perspective is we are faith-based counseling from a catholic point of view if anyone asks for catholic for counseling who is not catholic then we will be able to offer not catholic counseling but but that's what we do we, we specialize in the faith-based counseling um, Senior services, someone spoke about seniors before. We have this program called Adapt a Senior that we have already used in several parishes. Um, our goal is to reduce isolation with seniors. I mean, the reality in San Antonio is that we are a large city with many seniors who are living by themselves. And our goal is to reduce isolation and to ensure that these seniors have someone they can communicate. So again, someone spoke before about writing a letter of making phone calls. What we found out is that actually it's really good to actually make those phone calls um, because seniors like to talk. Uh, you can write a letter, you can write a postcard, you can write a birthday card or a Christmas card, uh, but most likely seniors have many, many stories to tell, so we always recommend people to actually listen to them. So in a time that we, we want volunteers, but we also are very um, strict about the volunteer process that we have and to ensure that we don't put anyone in danger, uh, we're still having volunteers dropping food to the seniors in their homes. We drop them at the entrance, we call the seniors, they pick it up, so there is, it's a safe 100%. But now we are, so, we are doing a lot of checkups in, with the seniors who actually don't have anyone. So it's a huge issue for us, and we are actually looking for volunteers for the seniors, uh, because it's something that we really need. And I think as the church, we should not leave anyone alone. We should not leave anyone desperate in this situation. So that is very important to us to have all the volunteers to actually help in this program Adapt a Senior. Same thing goes to the children that we have, some people that sit at home, wonderful shelters for kiddos from Central America and here from Texas. So if anyone can actually write, you know, cards to the kiddos saying, hey, thank you, God bless you, you know, uh, estamos contigo. Uh, things to ensure the kids understand that they are not alone that will be very, very well received from us. Uh, 
it's a major thing for us. We have hundreds of kids. We have hundreds of people that we serve every, every day. We had already four cases that we thought that we have uh, parents and families with coronavirus. Uh, we only have had one family as of right now that actually were tested positive. And that also puts a lot of stress in the, in the employees, as you can imagine. Um, the employees are keep they are keeping going. I mean, they are trying their best to actually help everybody. Uh, but for us, it's a huge issue. So, uh, food will be something that actually um, we could try to get a little more if, if we can get the help from the parishes, as well as telling us which parishes need help with food because we have an emergency mobile unit that actually can drop food to the parishes. So, if one of your parishes actually needs food because they have a food pantry, but the food pantry does not have any food please contact Catholic Charities. We'll be able to take the, the food pantry to you. We'll talk to the pastor or to the administrator and decide this is the best day for you guys. You can plan it ahead. Uh, and then we will be able to take thousands of pounds of food uh, to your parishioners. But also if you have a parish who can actually organize a food drive, I will, will really, really like to receive that uh, because for us, everything that comes in, it goes out. Anyone who is hungry right now, they can always go to St. Stephen's, uh, the old church that is in Sarsamora and, um, and uh, Brady. And then every day from 8 to 5, 8.30 to 5 o'clock, we're giving food to people, around 700 people a, a day these days. Um, so we're here for you guys. I mean, anything that you need from Catholic Charities today with this pandemic or after this pandemic, um, just let us know. Right now, my people are already working hard, preparing for after. Um, think right now we are we are in a state of anxiety and and depression to some degree, but unemployment is going to be huge for us in the weeks to come, in the months to come, especially after the pandemic. So, how do we help this city that was already one of the poorest cities in the United States to actually now ensuring that the unemployment that is happening will be able to be you know fought by someone? So adult education, you know, ESL classes, GED classes, anything that people need, we are already getting ready to start preparing for that. So starting May or June, we'll be offering a lot of classes to the people so they can get back to work. Thank you. Thank you, Antonio. And please stay. We, our next section, which is the uh, opening the forum for uh, the uh, our attendees' questions, um, please stay, Antonio, so you can also participate of the Q&A. Now, if you'd like to submit your questions in writing, as a reminder, you can please use the chat as you have been wonderfully doing. And, um, and if you want to state your question, you can always raise uh, your virtual hand. Um, so the uh, forum is open. Um, we have a question here, um, and I guess it's for you, Antonio. What number can people call to access, uh, to have access to the services you mentioned through Catholic counseling? I think we actually have, uh, my, pers my understanding is that you got the flyers that are gonna be sent to everybody after the, this meeting is, is uh, finished. So you will have that information. If not, then just please go to the Catholic Church website and, and then you can get all the numbers over there as well. Thank you. But let me put it here just in case. Um, I have a, a one question here. It, it says, I would like to know the current projected time for when masses will be made public again. Do we have, um, would it be you, Gigi, or um, Joan, who can guide us to with this question? Uh, I can say something about that. Uh, the only thing that we have uh, in the archdiocese is what directives are given by the archbishop. His last decree was that um, things will be masses are no masses are to be celebrated publicly until well through the 30th of April and before that we will have an update so that's what we that's what we live on some so much has to do with how the pandemic is developing how it's spreading or not how the curve is flattening or not and the archdiocese relies on the advice of our local health officials just like all of us do thank you gigi any other question 
And we have a question here from Debbie. It says, does anyone know if there is a permission slip that the students need to have their parents sign in order to use Zoom for online faith formation classes? I guess this is for you, Diti? I think it is for Lizette. Oh, Lizette. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, hi. There is a form. Uh, the what our risk management office has uh, advised is that if you if your current faith formation uh, registration form has a, a mentions there that um, video conferencing ability, ability is allowed, then you're okay with the current uh, registration form. Now, if the current form does not reference video conferencing, then you do need uh, a form to make sure that parents sign and give permission for their, um, for their youth to participate in Zoom or any video conferencing platform. And that um, form is on our website. If you go to uh, Archdiocese of San Antonio and then Department of Pastoral Ministries, uh, you're going to see the form there under the youth section. Um, it's a form that uh, it's a consent form for uh, online video conferencing. Thank you. And, and I, I have a last put the, question. The link in, in, I can put the link, sorry, in the chat for easy access. Thank you. Now we have a final question for our students that are graduating this spring. Can we invite them to return to confirmations once we are able to hold public events? Or can we have a letter ready for confirmandi that need to receive sacraments elsewhere? I can speak to that uh, question. Uh, again, uh, the Archbishop, as you might imagine, has been thinking about all of these things and has been writing to his priests about what the, the current thought, thought on all of this is. Right now, all confirmations are on hold to the Archbishop is waiting until the restrictions for large gatherings are lifted. And at that time, the confirmation schedule will be revisited. And you can be sure that this is not the only place, uh, not the only archdiocese where uh, this is taking place. So we must watch and wait. Um, and see when we are able to gather, and then we will hear from our Archbishop as to when these can continue. Um, I would like to, if I could, uh, I think I put it in the questions also, mention a resource that I think is helpful to everyone, uh, whether, again, you work with youth or adults or neophytes. Uh, Juan Carlos, if you could put uh, that image up on the screen, please. It's a resource called Easter Season with the First Disciples. It's designed for use, but it, it's got meditations and questions, but it's very easily adapted for adults and can be used through all the Easter season. It's, this is available through, it's a free download from, uh, I believe it's our Sunday visitor. And it can be used during all of the Easter season. And I think it's a very valuable thing. So it's available again on the DPM website under formation and education resources. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gigi. And once again, thank everybody for joining us today. A quick reminder, you will be receiving an email after this meeting with the uh, information that was provided by Antonio through Catholic Charities. And as Gigi mentioned, um, there is a, a array of resource, resources available in our website. And also at the end of this uh, meeting, you will see in the screen the contact information of our, our Secretariat Directors that are more than um, eager to assist us. Now, let me acknowledge and thank Bishop Mike, our Secretary of Directors, we said at home and Gigi. Thanks, Antonio, uh, for joining us uh, today. And also thanks Juan Carlos Rodriguez, who has been working in the background to have this smooth process in the meeting. So thank you, Juan Carlos. So to finish our meeting today, I would like to ask you to join us in prayer. And Gigi, could you please lead us in our closing prayer? 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother. See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bringing healing to those infected and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in ministry, we are here for you. Our information is displayed on the screen. Feel free to contact us. United us as one people of God going forth. Thank you, and until next time, bye.